Hello guys and welcome to a new Stud Division 2 video today by myself, Vulcan and Attack Power. Hello everyone, Attack Power here, super pumped for more Steel Division 2 finals. In this video we have for you game 3 of the best of 5 between Yamin and Ghosty in the grand final of the Division 1 Season 11 playoffs of the Steel Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Krupa and on our left in the red team we have Yamin playing with the 6th Airborne and the Maverick deployment type. And on our right in the blue team we have Ghosty playing with the 3rd US Armoured and the Maverick deployment type so currently Yamin 2 nil up in this series against Ghosty. Ghosty's having to get one back otherwise Yamin will be the victor of the Steel Division League season 11. What do you make of this attack power? I mean two solid divisions here. Sixth Airborne significantly buffed uh what back in August I guess when this the Men of Steel patch came out their uh AB pair has got snipers and stuff it just kind of put them way back on the map here. Uh, you get the Damlers for a very zippy start to the game. Of course, then AB Paras, AB Engineer, just AB anything. Anything with an AB in front of it you get in this division. So severe sniper spam. So it's one of the big issues in the game right now. They get a couple of Cromwell's Tetrarchs in the tank tab. Uh, lots of 17-pounders we see here from him. Uh, AA is not great. Definitely lacking. But then you get the Typhoons, which are like the best plane in the game, basically. Right? I'm not mixing it up with the Tempest, right? Typhoon's the, the best... I, think I mean, the, the Tempest is very good, but the Titans are reliable. Yeah, they're medium resilience and disgustingly fast. Uh, on the other side here, we have 3rd US Armor, which has made a good name for itself in this season. Um, of course, really lacking in infantry, but that's made up for the fact every unit comes in with a half-track. Your tank tab, really solid. It's basically what you always want Shermans to be, the M4A1's 76s that can actually kill tanks. That's uh, at least what I always want Shermans to be. Uh, lots of support there in the support tab. AT tab, fabulous with the M5 guns. Uh, AA, a little lacking, but there's enough to get by. Uh, and then you get the American Air Force, which has lots of big booms. All right. Well, let's have a quick look at what these chaps are getting down. For Yamin, it's going to be a bunch of airborne scouts. We've got the airborne leader, the air landing, the oxen bucks, and some Canadian powders at the back. And then we see the Centaur A4, which can indirect fire now. And we've got the Jeep Supply there. We've got the M1A1 pack 75mm infantry gun. There is the air landing and the Oxen Bucks with the Tetrarch. On the bottom side, we're going to see the M1A1 pack 75 with the air landing Oxen Bucks and the air landing Tetrarch. So a lot of these air landing at the start, which are nice, cheap, small squads with Piets. And then following up with the more elite Oxen Bucks. Over on the side of Ghosty, he's got the Flamethrower, the 50 cal, the M1 gun, and the armored rifles on the top side. We've got a Flamethrower further down, and one accompanying a M8 Scott. And on the very bottom side, it looks like the majority of Ghosty's forces are going to be yep. the Flamethrowers, the 50 cal, a big contingent of half tracks, all of these armored LMG rifles and armored rifles leading the way in. These are M3 half-tracks and M3A1 half-tracks, M15 CGMC, M5A1 Stuart, M4105, and two M4A1. So a large amount of forces here, and Ghosty really is going to want to make this work. Yeah, both of them. Uh, so Yaman's going up north big. He's got his push across the river here, and Ghosty going big down south. Kind of odd. I'm not a big fan of the southern push. The flags are really deep, hard to get. Um, and I just don't feel like there's a lot of room to develop the grab once you get it. But it's definitely unexpected, right? Most people don't expect this coming out of the blue side to push this left flank. Or southern flank, I should say. It's really going to be up to these air landing to get rid of this initial flamethrowers. And then they can set up with their Piats to help deal with a lot of the half tracks that are coming across. If the air landing end up getting pinned down, they might just get ran over uh, by a lot of this armor that's on its way. They are still getting forced back already by the M15 on the bottom side, but one in the mid will find a lot of information. Only one flamethrower holding that road. And on the top side, the smoke has allowed a couple of the airborne scouts to get across the river there, which might end up ambushing the armored rifles and the N3A1 half-track. But on this bottom side, uh, things are going okay, I would say, for Yamin for now. He hasn't lost anything just yet, uh, but his units are being forced back by these flamethrowers, and the flamethrowers haven't taken any damage in the process. Yeah, I mean, Ghosty's over the river. That, that's what matters here on this map. 
And this is honestly, this is how you play this map. You got to start with a massive opening. You got to hope you make a breakthrough on one of the three bridges. And from there, it's all about can you hold that bridgehead or is it going to go back to a grindy death match after that point? Yeah, good old Klooper. We were both wondering how they ended up on this map. It's a yeah. map that doesn't really suit the Maverick playstyle that both sides have decided to choose. Uh, but it looks like... Are these tanks having trouble getting across the river, or is he just... No, he hasn't ordered them to he head across just yeah. yet. Yeah, no, he hasn't. I'm not sure. I mean, I get not want to get too close, but you need him across the river. Like, they've got to get there. Pulling the trigger out. Now up north, Yaman's pushed successfully. He's got a lot of infantry over the river. They will not be dug out easily, especially because Ghosty's infantry aren't going to beat them at CQC in any shape or form. Um, even a little bit. So, yeah, both players here established, but Yaman on the 1410, because, again, these southern flags are just so deep. That was why I was a little confused at this choice. I would say a central push is actually a lot more effective a lot of times. Yeah, it allows you to really spread out from that position a lot easier, whereas on this bottom side you can get really sort of caught up on this ridge. Uh, but either way, the M4s have made it across this bridge and will be starting to chase down the Tetrarch. Tetrarch is looking to clean up some of the half tracks in the meantime. Would be good if you can get rid of that. Uh, nice. One of the 50 cow half tracks down, but more reinforcements are on the way. We've got another armored rifle joining, and the F 15 is now coming across as well. Whilst Ghosty is reinforcing the top side as well with the M4 105 and the M8 Scott. Yeah, waiting for this pack 75 mil to start throwing heat shell down. Yep. On these M4s. It's, it's the chance. A nice uh, identification by Ghosty to realize that there is not as much in the way of armor, and so he's able to really utilize his M8 Scots and the M4105s. But yeah, the pack 75 mil there, managing to get to the pen onto one of the M4s. The six pounder going to be killing off the same M4 that was penetrated. So nicely done. Can it take out the M4105 as well? It does. The two star veteran see there with the AB leader next to it. So important. Oh, and another penetration onto the third M4. And it goes down with the fourth shot. Oh. Very, very nicely done. This six pounder doing so much work against Ghosty's forces. The M3A1 half track, one bang as well. The six pounder not missing a shot. That extra veterancy was so, so important there. Nicely done by Yemen to get that airborne leader in. Yeah, and that's one of the strengths, too, of Sixth Airborne. You can vet so hard in this deck and still have tons of stuff. Like, his, the infantry tab is just basically all double vetted, and there's still no lack of infantry. So that's one of the strengths of Sixth Airborne. You can just get so much veterancy in this division, and it really does make a difference. And the P-51 coming in for the kill and doesn't find it either, since the six-pounder was already falling back. And the Oxen Bucks going to be falling back. Air landing are uh, getting slowly but surely cut down. But losing all of that armor in Ghosty's push here puts him in such a tough position. And Yamin's only bringing in more and more AT guns, including the captured Pack 40 that's going to be joining that bottom side. Meanwhile, Yamin on the top has dug himself in quite nicely and uh, grab both of these flags the air landing there managing to land the pier onto the n3 half track meaning oh. they will keep that flag for the time being well these infantry spotted the m15 now so the centaur is going after that killing that would be pretty big his air force of course extremely dangerous although now that i think about it, yaman only has two at typhoons he has no like bomber variant at all which is kind of weird yaman On just does not like side, air force the tetrarch going to be oh, engaging no. the M15 CGMC which will open up the air for some of Yamin's aircraft even if he is limited but uh, 6 pounder falling back after being hit by the 50 cal and the armored LMG rifles Canadian Palos still managing to hold on to their position due to the lack of armor to help this infantry now because that is one thing about the third armored is that they're one division that can't really rely entirely on their infantry uh, they really do require that combined arms to be effective and they're so effective when you do it having 50 cows everywhere is just so devastating all the time another Recon aircraft now coming in on this bottom side. Not really anything to stop that. Not even 50 cows from half tracks because 
One of them is the M3 half track with the 30 cal. The M5A1 doesn't have a 50 cal on the top. The infantry 50 cows can't shoot the plane. So this thing is just going to fly freely over this bottom side and discover all of the locations of Ghosty's forces, which is really not what Ghosty needs right now. No, information is so valuable to these top tier players. If they know where your stuff is, they'll kill your stuff. Kind of a weird smoking here from the Centaur up north. It's like a really... Why is he smoking that? Well, Typhoon brought in to try and intercept the P-51. I feel like it could Yamin kind of made... Realizes he made a mistake here and is rushing in the Polston to cover him off. Because that P-51 could very easily come back around and deal with the Typhoon because it has a lot more agility. Ooh. Nice bombing strike though onto the captured pack 40. That is now taken oh. care of. Polston going to unload and force back the P-51. I thought the P-51 was going to go for the bombing strike on the Polston. Yeah, that would have been me. pretty clutch. The six-pounder, uh, also a very good target there. But the Typhoon managing to get away with that one. That was maybe a little bit overambitious using the Typhoon AT to try and take out the Mustang head-on. Would have worked, but uh, Ghosty obviously not going to let that happen. 75 on the top side, suffering to the 50 cal. Those 50 cal units still very, very strong. Uh, this Typhoon just hunting for a target right now it has got its eyes on the M4105, but the P51 is coming across and is pre targeted. Oh, no. So that Typhoon is a goner. Oh, that's a big kill. That's 160 points going down there. Didn't do a thing. Yeah, that was kind of greedy, I would say. It's probably the best yeah. way to put it for, for Yamin right. there. <laughs> very, very greedy keeping that up after the threat, initial threat from the P-51 Mustangs. And yeah, wasteful as well. Yeah, it was definitely an underestimation of the danger of the P-51. Yes, Typhoons are better, but that doesn't mean the P-51 can't shoot you down. Yeah, the nice thing now, about the, thing the P-51s is, is they're very, very fast as well. So they can get on the tail of those Typhoons, which are equally as fast. Yeah, but the issue is here, Yaman managing to hold on to this flag down south, keeping his 1311 going. And with this Maverick Mirror, that really matters. Like, you can't be giving up flags for nothing. Yeah, and all of the games we've seen in this series so far, Yaman has always found this nice early lead, which allows him to get ahead in tickets and really put the pressure on Ghosty to be the one to make the move. And at the moment, he's kind of creating a nice area to kind of choke out Ghosty here because Ghosty's going to keep bringing over reinforcements on the bridge and his tanks are going to bump into these six pounders that are now set up and all of the infantry is just going to get chewed apart in the heavy cover so it's going to be incredibly difficult without artillery or like bomb support in order to break down uh, these units that Yamin is making good use of. Yeah, absolutely. Again, and that's why I feel like a central push would have been so much better. There's so much more open ground here to play with in the middle. Uh, yeah, there's a town there, but like then all this ground around he could have worked with. M8 Scott just blasting through here in the center, forcing back these infantry. I don't think it's going to catch that AV pair. Oh, he did. Wow. Yeah, I just about managed to get them before they cut over the other side of the river there because the M8 Scott would not be able to follow in that situation. But yeah, that one A8 Scott holding back the four units of infantry and just such a really good unit when there's no AT around. That's because of its 50 cal and its 75 mil gun. More Polstons being brought in for Yamin. Being aware of the bombing threat from Ghosty. Speaking of which, we see a B-26B Marauder on the way with the four 454 kilogram bombs. Looking That's to big. destroy these airborne Canadian powers, poor chaps. Yeah, and the Polstons have no chance. They're 20 mils like all 20 mils. Sad. Boom. But Wow. Seriously? Yeah, that did no damage. <laughs> I really expected that to do a lot more. Usually those bombs are very effective, but I think Yamin, he was already pinned down a little bit and it was able to retreat before the bombs landed, which is super, super important. It reduces the damage so significantly. Did he? I didn't think he retreated. I... Was it the water? Like, does the water reduce the blast zone? I don't think so. I think the M5A1 was getting shot some, wasn't it? I'm not... I just have no idea, but that... I have no idea, but that seemed very underwhelming. That is definitely... I don't think fallback should work so well against 500 kilogram bombs, but, you know, that's what it is, I guess. <laughs> well, nice kills on the bottom side. M1 gun cleans up one of the Tetrarchs. The 50 cal here has 
free line of sight onto the six pounder thanks to this recon, this three vet recon that's kind of sat in the end of this town here. It's actually a really nice position to have that recon because it is going to spot these six pounders anytime they come to the edge of the tree lines. Meanwhile, the AB Paras further down, even with their Bren and Lee Enfield sniper, they're going to get overrun by the M1 Garands that these armored rifles offer, and that will give ghosty this flag finally to push it to a 12 to 12 and even going to be capturing back the one further up on the top side so 13 11 now for ghosty in the center the 50 cal is holding back the tetrarchs which is kind of comical <laughs> it's like forcing them back because uh, if your if your armor is 20 millimeters or less is that what it is the 50 cal will be able to like shoot and pen you and like pin you down yeah, we'll do damage over time, but it'll be limited damage. It's just suppression, yeah, for sure, that matters. And uh, nice bombing strike there as well, also going to force back the Oxen Bucks and the air landing. Uh, but in real life there, yeah, that 50 cal would certainly tear through a Tetrarch. This looks comical in-game. The uh, Up north, the M4105 doing some work now with the help of the 50 cal as well. And uh, we're in the B phase. So both players getting all their income. <laughs> the six pounder just getting through before being pinned down. Gets behind the smoke and will be able to get into cover there in order to help shoot at the M3 half track that is capturing that flag at the moment. If you can kill that off, it might allow these airborne Canadian paras to sneak across the river again and push him back to a 13-11. Now the Centaur on the bottom side firing into the position of the 50 cal, which might actually cause the death of the recon, which I would say in this position is a lot more important because that is giving very, very good eyes onto these AT guns. That would threaten his armor down on that bottom side. But now Ghosty really doesn't have anywhere to go, as you mentioned. Now he's taking these two flags across the bridge here. I think his main thing to do is just try and get Yaman back across the river elsewhere so that he can uh, solidify his lead for the rest of the game. Yeah, he's got to squeeze him off his side, right? I mean, there's a lot to squeeze out up north. He's already recaptured this flag. This half-track going to go down to the Tetrarch. He really needs to kill that off. That snuck over in the center here. Um, and it, it really hasn't reinforced the center at all, which is kind of surprising because he could just run across. Tetrarch does go down, though. M5A1 Recon, though, also does down. P51 coming in. Will the 20 mils oh, be enough? The Tetrarch just popped the M4A176 with two side shots. <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> what a god. It fires so fast with that two veterancy, and it certainly took advantage with the ambush there onto the M4A1. Six pounder even survives the bombing strike from Ghosty, and Ghosty not having a good time here as his M4 Jumbo has been penetrated on the bottom side as well already by one of these six pounders yeah this it's not going well <laughs> it's just not now he's almost captured his flag back up north most of these infantry can't do anything about this m8 scott it could probably just drive forward a little bit and capture that flag yep and you see the jumbo backing off as the six pounders put on to return fire the recon's actually been moved out into the open on this bottom side yamin currently having no recon of his own to spot that but I, I believe an infantry squad will spot that relatively easy when Yamin makes another push so Ghosty only a matter of time until he loses his eyes on that bottom side but enough Polstons in position including a tri Polston in order to stop and potentially kill oh. the P-51 it goes down very nicely done yeah the P-51s have been a little underwhelming their their bomb loadout is not heavy enough to like consistently wipe stuff out so a lot of the strikes have not gotten the kills that Ghosty desperately needs. Absolutely. Now the M1 gun. Oh, finding a nice kill there on the bottom side. Takes out an AT gun before it unloaded. And now Cromwell 5 going to be coming up on this bottom side as well, but won't be wanting to go into that same AT gun. MA Scott, meanwhile, on the top side, actually getting some decent suppression down. Centaur was firing at the M15 further back on the top. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot more on this map than Ghosty does right now. If we just zoom out a little bit and have a yeah. look. But we do see two Jumbos on the way. And honestly, Jumbos are going to be things that the 6th Airborne will struggle with without the use of the Typhoon AT, which we've already saw go down, and also 17-pounders. 
Well, even the 17, at maximum range, the 17 pounder, like, just should not penetrate the jumbo. Now, it'll happen, but it shouldn't. Right, jumbo's driving around with 190 millimeters of frontal armor. 17 pounder doing 170. Really shouldn't be able to pen it. In real life, it would. <laughs> yeah, uh, Hey, this game is historically accurate. Don't you dare imply otherwise. <laughs> well, P51 just about managing to get away with that bombing strike on the bottom side. Poor Alster being shot down, though, on the side of Yamin. Those little recon aircraft, you would not want to be driving them or flying them around oh, in instead oh of Vision God. 2. <laughs> oh my God. It's like, goodbye, bro. Never going to see you again. Down south. Yaman building up an attack force here, unloads his 17 pounder to get that in position. He was waiting for B phase to get. I mean, I don't think you can bring him in A phase. I don't know. I can't remember. Ooh. But he put both. What? Top side, P 51 goes down. Marauder coming in with a big bombing strike onto this tree line. And there is a lot of targets there. This could be actually very damaging this time around. Is, is somebody, like, put dud bombs in or something? Because that, again, just yeah. really didn't do much damage at all. No, like the AB, the en AB engineers are literally like 20 meters away from that and took no damage at all. That's wild. That's wild. I've seen those bombs absolutely wipe stuff yeah. before. <laughs> yeah, they should have they should have shredded. Oh, <laughs> Bofors down south gets caught out by the Cromwells and the Tetrarch there. That definitely rough. Unfortunately, there's no armored rifle there to, to zook those. So, Ghosty's position down south not even looking that strong now. Looks like Yaman's going to cheeky grab this flag over the river perhaps? Yeah, he's going to get two. Um, it's gonna the salient's going to extend over the village there, and the Cromwell can now come round behind this jumbo, which is a really really bad position for it because the jumbo is already damaged. The six pounder is getting ready and in position to fire at it. We've got the seventeen pounder already firing at it from the bottom side here. Now the Cromwell moving around will want to kind of hurry because it's only a matter of time until the jumbo can pin down the seventeen pounder. Oh, but there's the side shot from the... Was that the six-pounder? Uh, I didn't think it was. I thought the centaur maybe killed it off. Yeah, it could have been. Because it was throwing HE, throwing HE down. But the point is, Jumbo out of the way, and that was kind of the only roadblock there for Yaman. His centaur up north hitting that 81 mil mortar. I mean, that Marauder Strike was so disappointing. I, I'm just like still baffled by why that's doing no damage. <laughs> well, the 50 cal, meanwhile, takes out the six-pounder. On the bottom side, armored rifles engaging the airborne para and the airborne Canadian para. The airborne para with that sniper rifle, incredibly lethal, and uh, able to finish off that squad with the 50 cal also going down. Six pounder able to turn around and kill the Cromwell 5, though, which is a nice kill. Both is being brought up on the back side are going to end up being engaged by the grenadiers. Uh, meanwhile, in the mid, the rest of Yaman's forces there are being slowly but surely cleaned up. So things still are 12 to 12 across the board. Uh, the unit disparity still looks like it's very much in Yaman's favor, but now Ghosty's forces are getting pushed back across the river um, as Yaman cleans up. Yeah, and wow, even that freaking P-51 dropping two of those bombs on the Grenadiers only did a couple damage. Oy. But he is taking, he's getting a lot of armor kills at this point, which is a big deal. He's got two 155s in the back. It looks like he's finally going to start countering that centaur. But the problem is we're now in C phase. So what they got on the map is going to be what they get to use for the majority of the game. And that's not looking good for Ghosty. Yeah, the Grenadiers are getting slowly but surely taken out there by the M5A1. Ghosty still able to get this armored rifle across the bridge for now, which is good for him. And the 50 cal should help pin down these airborne pallets that are moving across the open. But this, this M1 gun is still vulnerable as they reach the buildings. And the armored rifle is not really going to be able to do much about it. So yeah, Ghost is still going to be in a bad position here. As Yemen maintains his position across the river on the top side. Whilst Ghosty is most likely to lose his. Yeah, and, and getting it back across the river is so challenging and honestly unlikely. The only chance he really has at this point is maybe the center, like a wild push down the center, but eventually Yaman can just throw a 17 pounder on the hill, and then you're not getting through there anymore. Yeah, this this ain't looking good. Little John's on the bottom side, getting ready to pounce on some of this armor. It'd be pretty fun to see the Little John's take out the jumbo. It would require quite a lot of shots, I imagine. 
Uh, but the 130 mils of penetration there, pretty strong. Uh, just lacks damage, so four damage a shot re require three shots to kill that jumbo on target penetrations. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of side shots. <laughs> yeah, it is. Top side centaurs still trying to harass the 81 mil mortar and the M15. An 81 mil mortar is something that uh, maybe we could have seen a bit sooner instead of a lot of these bombers. I think over time those would have been a lot more cost efficient for Ghosty, but nice bombing strike on this bottom side, finally seeing the P-51 hit hard, takes out the leader and the Grenadiers, but then one gun going down to Airborne Engineers as the Jumbo moves up here, 17 pounders, very close range. Oh. This is scary for the Jumbo, will the Amin There's make it two. fire? There's two 17 pounders, he'll get a side shot, oh, Ghosty act thankfully notices the danger he put himself in there and falls back. So the infantry recaptured that flag though. Yaman now in the 1311 with his holdings up north and now grabbing both flags down south again. Oh, it's off, off map, map time. It's actually, we have actually been uh, very shy of off map in this grand final um, so far. And now finally going to be seeing the 203 millimeter off map come down. And since Ghosty's forces are nicely concentrated here across the bridge, um, this could hit pretty hard, although he has decided to use emergency once again. Actually, Why wasn't he... he using emergency before? Yes, yes. Yeah, we, <laughs> there, we did see off map in the Orsha East game, which I think yes. was the first one. Yes, of course. And it was just this dumb emergency again. We're like, Why is he doing that? <laughs> that reminded me of it. I was like, I forgot about it because it just wasn't very effective. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was completely useless. And it, and this is a good off map. Like, the 203 is a, is a deadly off map. It actually kills stuff. Not when you do it on emergency fire, but when you do it on any other version, <laughs> like any other mode. This is so strange. Yeah, if the 2A3 actually hits something, then it will probably kill it. Like one of these half-tracks, for example. Maybe not the Jumbo or the M5A1, but certainly the half-tracks or this infantry. Uh, B26 did manage to get its bombs off on this bottom side, but it's going to fly right over all this Aww. AA, so that is absolutely curtains. Does take out one of the engineers, at least, before it goes down. Little John's now engaging the M5A1. Do you manage to kill it off? Nicely done. Uh, but, yeah, the bombing strike, at least forcing the airborne engineers off for the time being, not as effective as he would have liked it, and certainly didn't get value out of that bomber whatsoever throughout this game. No. that Yeah, that was rough. It's all kinds of rough. Now, he grabbed the flag back. So Yaman's going to have to spend some more time. He's got reinforcements already coming in to try to recap that flag. And again, that's why I just I don't like pushing the southern position. It's so easy for the opponent to get troops right up next to the flag and sit there. And then you have to work really hard to dig them back out. Yeah, nice kills by the 17 pounder on the top side. Cleans up both the half tracks, leaving the armored rifles out in the open. Double P-51 bombing strike now coming in to potentially overwhelm the AA. The smaller one gets off the bombs. Does kill off the engineers, but the bigger one not dropping those is unfortunate. We're now going to be seeing the investment into two of these M12 GMC 155s on the back side here. These can certainly hit hard, uh, but it just it looks like he's going to be targeting the AA. And at this point, is it worth targeting the AA? Because Ghosty's kind of already lost a bunch, like a couple of uh, of Mustangs and his big bomber. Uh, I don't know if it's really like worth the time and investment using that large caliber artillery that would be very effective at pinning down a lot of this infantry and helping him push out of these backline units. Yeah, I don't... I Maybe his mindset is this game's going to go long, so if I kill the A off... I mean, Sick Airborne doesn't have much. He still has several Mustangs left and at least one B-26 left. I mean, if he kills off the AA, his planes will absolutely dominate. There's no question... And the thing is, counter-battering the Centaurs is a waste of time. It's easy to move them. Like, it's kind of the problem. I don't know, and I feel like the 155s take a while to, like, aim up and actually get rounds on target, so, like, targeting infantry always feels a little ineffective. Yeah, well, the 17-pounder managing to take out the M4105 on the top side, so another support gun from Ghosty being taken care of. 17-pounder on the bottom side takes out the Jumbo as well. This is really just going from bad to worse for Ghosty, losing two significant pieces of armor there. No reply whatsoever. The mortifier is coming in onto those AT guns, but the AT gun, I believe, had 
already moved, or is it? No, it hasn't. No, it's still there. Yeah, it's a six pounder and a seventeen pounder. But like, I mean, he's already killed the significant armor. <laughs> yep. They're already dead. Two M4A3s coming in though to try to perhaps overwhelm these AT guns. As more mortar fire will be coming in soon. Armored rifles unloading. The air landing ready and waiting to receive them. Here on target of the M8 Scott will find the kill. Nicely done indeed at close range. The air landing will struggle against the armored rifles with the BAR, but if it's going to keep killing off these half tracks, those exploding will cause a little bit of extra suppression. The fire coming in from the Grenadiers and the Can Canadian Paras, they're also helping out quite a lot. So that engagement not really going as well as I'd imagine Ghosty would have liked. M21 mortar carrier getting stressed out and forced back, but this bottom side absolutely being sweeped up now by Yaman. Yeah, now the worst part is the crackback from Yaman is going to be significant. There's a lot of troops here, and there are no troops for Ghosty. He's got two armored rifles in half tracks. I mean, they cannot stop this. Yeah, he does at least lose one of the... Cromwell's here to the armored rifles, so one last hurrah for Ghosty, but here we go. The Cromwell 5 now going to be freely pushing across the river. Bofors will not be able to stop this whatsoever. Two armored rifles are rushing in to take positions into this village, and it's really just going to be a race to see who gets there first. And I imagine Yamin will get these yeah. Tetrarchs into position to stop those reinforcements, and that's going to give Yamin a very, very nice dug in position in this village yeah that's yeah that's really bad. <laughs> this is all really bad there's so many yaman's got so many troops on the map and ghosty has so few and the armored rifles forced to unload early p51 coming in for the warring strike onto the daimler daimler won't really have to worry about that unless it's the bigger bombs which are now coming in after the fact onto the tech truck little john <laughs> yeah the little john goes Tet truck goes down. Typhoons on the top side also going to be coming in looking for the M4A3 105s. One of them being retargeted at the last second towards the M4A3 on the top side and that one gets the kill. So nicely done. M10A1 coming in on this bottom side to try and cover the push but yeah, uh, Ghosty's going to call it at 29 minutes and 6 seconds as he does not see a way back into this match 2610 kills to 1745 losses yeah that was uh that was decisive i'm kind of i'm not sure if i would have i agree with the third armor choice krupa is is shockingly cqc it doesn't look like it should be and yes long range units can be super helpful but like your infantry always get into a grind in those towns around, you know, around the rivers and in the forests that are located around the rivers. And having no CQC to work with makes it so hard to grab those positions back if you lose them. It's yeah, well, I don't very hard. Think that Ghosty's push across the river on the bottom side was necessarily too bad until that six pounder just sliced and diced his armor apart. Look at the kills oh, on yeah. that thing: two M4s, one M4105 for both the fifty cal half tracks and eventually the m4a3 that it did side shot on that bottom side oh, that yeah. is really really rough 17 pounder picking up another jumbo just no value out of those jumbos whatsoever and yeah i think the third armored with those jumbos is a significant threat to the sixth i think but um the sixth does have the tools to deal with them with the typhoons and the 17 pounders like and on that map, as you said, it's a lot closer range. So the 17 pounders do have the penetration that they need in those situations. Um, so yeah, Ghosty's not just not really be able to make it work. I would say an overinvest, in my opinion, to the Mustangs and the bombers. I think relying more on the on the mortars in this sort of situation would have been nicer um, and uh, more consistent. Yeah, and I understand why he went so heavy on the air. I mean, Sick Airborne does not have good AA. So, like, there was definitely a chance that it could have cracked it open at some point, but the bombers were weirdly ineffective. American bombers usually just, like, eviscerate entire parts of the map. And this game, I don't know what was going on. It was very strange. Yeah. Um, it was it's just very odd. I, I do think Ghosty had some bad luck when it came to bombing strikes. 
But, I mean, definitely getting outplayed there by Yaman. A great match to both players, though. That makes Yaman our Steel Division 2 Season 11 League Champion. Indeed. 3-0. Congratulations to Yaman. Commiserations to Ghosty, but still taking second place. Nothing to scoff at whatsoever. Anything else you'd like to add for this game? No, thanks for casting with me again, Vulcan. Always a great time. Yeah, indeed. We'll have to look forward to the next Steel Division League, but that's it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed uh, all of the cast between me and Attack Power. Definitely make sure to go check out Attack Power if you haven't already. Um, and uh, yeah, come and check out me maybe as well. If you don't Thanks, know who I am, Vulcan. Yeah. <laughs> go check out the 20 times size guy. Check that guy <laughs> but no, definitely go check out Attack Bar if you haven't. Um, <laughs> thank you very much, guys, for watching. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.